chapter 14 spelt, dealt with electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic radiation. When talking about electromagnetic waves, we generally use the symbol C. What does C stand for with, with, when we're talking about electromagnetic waves? Mr. Smith? Sure, C, electromagnetic waves, refers to what? The simple lowercase c. It's not seen it, help them out. Um, Bill? Speed of, speed of light, generally I don't call it the speed of light, it's generally called the speed of light, but I usually call it Miller. Speed electromagnetic waves it's to specifically identify it is the speed of electromagnetic waves, which uh, visible light is a portion of, and you identify that it is true in a vacuum. Uh, we also consider it to be true in air in this class. What is the speed of electromagnetic waves in a vacuum? Dan? Dan? Uh, well, three, three sig figs. 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Good, the speed of all electromagnetic waves. Uh, chapter 14 dealt with what happens when light runs into opaque objects, which is the concept of reflection of light. And we have this equation, theta i equals theta prime. Theta sub i. Christine, theta sub i, what does the i stand for? The incident uh, angle, so the, remember the incident is a light going toward the object here, which is a mirror. Bless you. The prime, theta prime, uh, is what, Char? Theta i is the incident angle. What is theta prime? The what? No, reflected. Right, the reflected angle. And remember that those are the same. All of these angles, the incident angle, the reflected angle, the refracted angle, the critical angle, all of these angles in chapters 14 through 16 are all measured with Jessica? The incident angle, the reflected angle, the refracted angle, the critical angle, all of these angles from chapters 14 through 16 are always measured with? Well, we could do them in radians, yes, but uh, relative to, not, not the dimensions. Heather, help us out? Relative to the normal. They're always measured relative to the normal. Please remember that. We have all sorts of symbols in chapter 14. One of them is a lowercase f. What does the lowercase f stand for? Kelsey? The focal length. The focal length. We have that in terms of the uh, capital R, the radius of curvature. What is the focal length in terms of the radius of curvature, Danner? Is the radius of curvature <laughs> divided by two? That's why we have all sorts of different uh, symbols here. One of them is a lowercase p. What does lowercase p stand for, Heather? It's image object distance. That is the object distance. We also have the image distance. What is the symbol for the image distance? Well. Q, lowercase q. The object distance and the image distance are both the distance from the center of the mirror along the blank to either the object or the image. What is the blank in that sentence? Cosine. Axis of symmetry. No, it is not called the axis of symmetry. It's called the principal axis. The principal axis is that line that goes right down the middle. All right. Uh, we have, I guess I'll just write down the equation. We have 1 over the focal length equals 1 over the object, one over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance, the relationship between all of those. Um, don't forget your ray diagrams. Uh, in your ray diagrams, we have three different rays. What are the three different rays? in the ray diagrams. Rick. Focal, parallel, and chief ray. The focal ray, the parallel ray, and the chief ray. I'm not going to walk through how to draw all of those. Um, we've done that plenty. 
Uh, we have different types of mirrors. We have a concave mirror. We have a convex mirror. I'm going to talk specifically right now about the convex mirror because there are four things I have to remember that are always true about convex mirrors. What are those four things? Sure. If they're upright, reduced, commercial, okay. uh, hold, hold up. So the image is always upright. What was it? Upright? Reduced. Reduced. Virtual. And, and virtual. And the focal length is always less than zero. Those are true for uh, all real objects, of course, when you're figuring out the image. Great. That was chapter 14. Chapter 15 it was what happened when light ran into something that was transparent. So we're talking about lenses. This one's about mirrors. This one's about the lenses. Also, um, well, other transparent materials as well. It uh, dealt with the concept of refraction. In chapter 15, we had the same N as we had in chapter 17. But it's different. It's the same symbol. But this N stands for the, the index of refraction. What is the equation for the index of refraction, please? Lindsay. In whatever medium you're talking about. Great. What then is the range of values you could have for indices of refraction, Mitch? Um, it could be equal to one if you're talking about the index of refraction of, for example, a vacuum, but greater than equal to one. So one of the things we've identified is as the index of refraction increases, the light is bent. If you go from one a material with a smaller to a then to a one with a higher index of refraction, what do we know about the direction that the light is bent? Bent toward the north. If you increase the index of refraction, it's bent toward. Oh, I got two things. Less than the north. Uh, let's see. Oh, Snell's Law. Duval, can you please tell me what Snell's Law is? It is um, the NI. NI. Index of refraction initial. It's not initial. Oh. The I in this, instant. the instant, keep going. Um, times sine of the instant angle equals um, instant of the instant angle plus the refracted. The refracted index of refraction. <laughs> times sine of the refracted angle. Great, Snell's law. Uh, lenses we work with are pretty much the same as a mirror. What type of lens has the same properties as a convex Mirror, carbon. Uh, diverging lens. A diverging lens would fit in the same category as a convex mirror. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Theta sub C. Theta sub C stands for, Andrew? Um, the critical angle. The critical angle. What is the critical angle? Lindsay. It is the angle, it has to be less than or equal to the angle, or the incident angle, and if it is, it's totally internal. Totally internally? Reflected. Reflected. So it is the minimum incident angle. Incident light is totally internally reflected. 
it's where the refracted angle would be 90 degrees. In other words, the sine of the critical angle equals the refracted index of refraction divided by the, the instant index of refraction. Chapter 16. Chapter 14 was about what happens when light runs into an opaque material. Chapter 15 was what happens when light runs into a transparent material. Chapter 16 was about what happens when light runs into itself. It had to do with the concept of interference of light. We had two equations. D sine theta equals m times lambda, and D times the sine of theta equals m plus 1 half times lambda. Let's make sure we know what these are. D can be two different things. Hannah, give me one of the two things that D can represent. Yes, but what about the diffraction? True, the D could stand for something for the diffraction gradient. What would it be if we're talking about a diffraction gradient, Andy? I want to know what it's called. Or, or a definition, either one. Something. Uh, no, I want to know specifically, we're going to talk about all that, but I want to know specifically what does D stand for in this equation if you're talking about a diffraction gradient. Hedler. It's the distance between um, the uh, No, it, okay. Not, if not you're, slits, but, uh, okay, if it's slit separation if we're talking about slits, but for a diffraction gradient, it's different. The distance between the lines. It's called the grading spacing, right? The distance between the lines on the grading. Or as you said, for a double slit experiment, it would be called the slit separation. Uh, sine of theta, theta again is the angle between the ray and the normal. M stands for what? What do we call M, Duval? The order number. The order number. What are possible values for the order number song? Positive integers, negative integers, and zero. Uh, lambda stands for rubber. Wavelength. wavelength. What is the wavelength range of visible light? Learner. Um, it's greater than zero. Like, no, the, the wavelength range of visible light. What am I for? Seven. Billy. 400 to 700 nanometers. You don't have to have them memorized, so I was just curious. 400 to 700 nanometers. There's a difference between these two different equations. What is the difference between these two different equations? The first one is the refractive gradient for the second Great. The first one is for a bright fringe, the second one is for a dark fringe. What is another term, for example, for a bright fringe? Another term for a bright fringe. Cross. Ah, it's where we have constructive interference. I agree. The second one where we have a dark fringe is where we have destructive interference. It's not what I was going for, but that's fine. It's important to know. Uh, the, so the question was, what do we call, what's another term for a bright fringe, Pooja? A maximum. What's the one in the middle called for a bright fringe, Low. Uh, the central maximum. The central maximum. What is the name fringe above or to the right of the central maximum, the name of the first dark fringe. Wicked. It's not called the central minimum. That's why I'm talking about it. It's not called a central minimum. Because there is no central minimum. That's the issue. This one is called, Sims? The zeroth order minimum. And it's a, it's a source of some, some confusion. And remember, m equals zero. It can't be right in the middle. That's only true for the central maximum. So it is the zeroth order dark fringe. Ladies and gentle people, I have put on the board one single board. I fit it all on there. It took a little bit of work. There's actually extra space in there. Um, put everything pretty much we've learned in the second semester. Take a moment and bask in the glory that is all the information you learned. <laughs>